Well, today I'd like to talk about these new papers that are on the market that are made to emulate darkroom photography. Uh, all the manufacturers now make a, a version of these, and they really w lend themselves well to digital black and white printing. Oh, okay. So here we have uh, an example. Uh, I needed to make uh, the same image on all the all the different types of paper to show the uh, qualities of the paper. They're all quite different, but it kind of brings back to mind sitting in a dark room and deciding, well, this picture might print well on Agfa, and that picture might print well on a Kodak Metalist, and maybe I'll use Seagull for this paper. You know, all the different darkroom papers used to exist gave a lot of variety to what a photographer could print on. And now, the same thing is happening with digital paper. You can see some of the papers are warmer, and some of them are, are colder in tone. Some of them have a more glossy surface. Can you see that gloss? Yes, I can. Like that? This is a, a Harman gloss fiber base AI paper. It's, it's a really nice one. When you open the box of this paper, it actually smells like darkroom paper. <laughs> then, then For this, all of us that grew up in the uh, Everybody room. who grew up in the, remember that. This was one of the first ones that came out. This was uh, a museo paper called Silver Rag, and it's got a slight luster surface. Can, yes, it does. I can, I can see the reflection of the light off. And, and uh, this, is, well, this was like the first one that... that is that good? Yeah. The first one that came out, and then all the other companies realized that, yeah, this was a valid direction to work with. And here, let's, let's see. The well, what have they been waiting for? It was a technology issue. Oh, okay. uh, they had to come up with a inkjet receptive surface that would also look like a, a photographic print. And up till now, they were photo emulsion papers, but they looked like RC papers. Right. Yeah, they did. I just finished doing a project on that, and I didn't like it one bit. No, and these are, in fact, all fiber-based papers. Some of them are cotton, some of them are alpha cellulose, okay. and they all have a, uh, a layer of a reflective material, the burrata layer. Mm -hmm that was used in making original photographic papers, and now they've figured out a way to get that into the inkjet em emulsion. So, so when they were able to accomplish that, uh, they could make these papers. And then on the other side, almost all of the major printer companies now incorporate light gray and uh, light, light gray into their ink set. So you get neutral f black and white prints from a color inkjet printer. Okay. So these were two advances that were happening simultaneous to each other, and they've now come together, and now we can do this. Okay, John, what, what paper do you have here? Okay, this is probably the most popular of this, these types of paper. Uh, this is the Ilford Gold uh, Fiber Silk, they call it, and it's the most reasonably priced papers of this class of paper. Now, what do you like about this, John? It really does have the look and feel of darkroom paper, and, and it is affordable. That's now, it. you getting a, is this the most popular? Uh, yes, actually, for I'm showing you the three purpose? most popular. This is this is the first one that comes in because of price. This is the Innova Fiber Ultra Smooth Gloss, and this paper uh, was was actually chosen by a gallery that sells vintage prints as looking the most like a darkroom print in their estimation. And I like this one. This is the one I mostly showed to people who come here for getting prints made. And it has a real subtle gloss, and it's very smooth, which I think is most like an actual darkroom paper for the most part. And it also, you can see the uh, midtones are handled very well. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I can I can we can see that. You can see the midtones. Let's see now. What else do you have? This is the Harman Gloss FBAI, and they also have a warm tone version of this, uh, which I don't have an example of yet. It only came out recently, and this is probably the overall best of the lot. It is more expensive than the other version, other papers that we've seen, but it it really has the look and feel of a darkroom paper. Again, because it's very smooth and has that slight bit of gloss. Even. Yeah, to that. Now, and, and this has a really good D Max and a really long uh, uh, highlight tone. So it, it really makes the printer feel like they're getting what they got in the dark room. Okay.